There are several ways to measure alcohol content. In this video, I'm going to show you four. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use a hydrometer, as well as how to use a refractometer. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to use the new digital hydrometer and a new digital refractometer by Anton Parr, which now allows you to calculate alcohol content of finished beer with no prior readings. If you've ever brewed before, you'll likely understand that this is actually a pretty big deal. But before I get started, I want to quickly give you some background information so this all makes sense. In brewing, we use changes in the density of liquid to determine alcohol content, and home brewers often use specific gravity measurements, which is a measurement of density relative to the density of water. The density of pure water has what's known as a specific gravity of one. If you dissolve sugar in that water, you increase its density and the specific gravity reading will be higher. If you then ferment that sugar and turn it into alcohol, you decrease the density and the specific gravity will drop. If you take gravity measurements before and after fermentation, you can use that information to calculate alcohol by volume or ABV. As I mentioned, there are several tools that allow you to take these measurements. And the first one I'll show you how to use is a hydrometer. The most important thing you need to know about hydrometers is that there are actually two types, brewing hydrometers and proofing hydrometers. Brewing hydrometers are used to measure the density of whiskey mash, beer wort, finished beer, and wine. Proofing hydrometers are used to measure the density of distilled spirits. You can't use a proofing hydrometer for beer, and you can't use a brewing hydrometer for spirits. So make sure you get the right one if you order one online or you buy one locally. To calculate the alcohol content of beer, or the ABV, here's what you do. First, fill a test flask with wort at the end of your brew day. Take a measurement of specific gravity by gently dropping in a brewing hydrometer and reading the number at the bottom of the meniscus. Write this number down. Next, take a temperature reading of the sample. Write it down. Then, look at the literature that came with your hydrometer to find out what it's calibrated to. They're usually calibrated to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature of the sample you took was any other temperature than that, you'll need to do a temperature correction using the chart that came with your hydrometer or by using an online calculator. It's best to get the sample as close to the calibration temperature as possible before taking a reading because it will be more accurate that way. At the end of the process, once fermentation is complete, you'll repeat this exact process using finished beer. ABV is determined by subtracting the second number from the first and doing some additional math or just looking the information up on a chart. In our case, um, I'm just making a yeast starter here and I was shooting for a gravity of 1.030. More realistically, during an actual brew day, you'd see something like 1.050, also known as 1050, um, for the starting gravity. Before fermentation and 10.10 or 1.010 for the final gravity after fermentation with a difference of 0.04, which would mean that you brewed a beer that's five and a quarter percent alcohol by volume. To get this number, I subtracted 10.10 from 10.50, which is 0.040. I then multiplied that number by 131.25, which uh, leaves me with 5.25 and that'd be the alcohol by volume percentage of a beer with those benchmarks. The, the math is not that difficult but if you don't want to do the math you can check out the link below for a complete gravity to ABV chart on our website. The next tool we're going to look at is a refractometer. Um, my best advice is that before you use one of these you actually just throw it in a trash can and get another tool because these things are absolute garbage. I know I'm going to take heat in the comment section, but I bet a lot of people commenting actually have no idea how inaccurate these things really are. The first problem with them is that they're not designed to easily and accurately measure maltose, which is the primary sugar in beer wort. To use a refractometer for beer, you actually need to build in a wort correction factor to account for the maltose, which literally requires plugging readings from 10 different mashes into a spreadsheet then using that information to correct all future measurements. Also, even if you have the patience for that, turbidity, which is the amount of sediment in beer and the color of the beer itself, will throw off refractometer measurements as well. And as far as I know, there is no way to correct for that. They're also temperature sensitive and you need to correct for that as well. 
But the final straw with traditional refractometers is that they're only good for measuring unfermented wort. You cannot use them to accurately measure liquid with alcohol in it either. So they're useless when it comes to taking a final gravity measurement without using yet another spreadsheet and correction factor. So if you've been using refractometers without doing all of this stuff, congratulations, your numbers were all wrong. Uh, but if you um, do use them and you want to know how to use them correctly or you're just dead set on buying one and you, you want to know how to use it, here's how you do it. First, calibrate the unit by placing a few drops of distilled water onto the slide and um, you set the scale to zero. Next, place a few drops of beer wort onto the slide and make sure there aren't any bubbles and then hold it up to a light source. Um, a natural light source is best and here's what the reading will look like. As you can see, it's a bit off from my hydrometer reading and I happen to know that my hydrometer reading is correct. Um, so to make this right, I'd need to apply a temperature correction and then a wart correction and then I'd need to take these readings again once the beer is done and apply the same corrections as well as an alcohol correction, which by the way, still isn't going to be very accurate. Um, so I'm not gonna take the time to correct this but I will include formulas and links to calculators in a detailed article on our website. Those are the two lowest cost uh, tools for measuring gravity. Depending on the quality, the hydrometer will cost anywhere from 10 to $20 and the refractometer will cost anywhere from 20 to 40. We sell both on our website. In my opinion, the clear winner is the hydrometer, um, but I also know people who use refract refractometers, so you do you. All right, let's move on and talk about some of the newer, more high-tech options. The first one is the Easy Dense Digital Hydrometer by Anton Parr. It measures bricks, Play-Doh, and of course, specific gravity, as well as a bunch of other stuff. It's accurate to 0.001 and is much easier to read than a standard hydrometer. Also, one of the really cool things about this is that it automatically corrects for temperature as long as your sample is in the ballpark of the calibration temp. And perhaps the best feature is that it only requires a tiny sample to get a reading. It's a lot more expensive, a lot more expensive than a glass hydrometer, but it's a lot more accurate and it's much, much more convenient. Setup is extremely easy. Just download the Brewmeister app for Android or iPhone, pop the Easy Dens out of the box, hit power, and then hit the connect button and it will connect automatically. Honestly, this is one of the easiest to connect and most reliable Bluetooth devices I've ever owned. To use it, take a small sample of wort, degas it with a syringe and run it through the unit. It'll provide the temperature of the liquid and the temperature corrected specific gravity in just a few seconds. To get the most accurate readings, the temperature of the sample should be somewhere between 40 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to use different units, just uh, get into the settings on the app and navigate to what you want. You can also save the reading so you don't even need to write anything down. We've been using the first version of the Easy Dens uh, for years and this one's even better. It's 400 bucks, but if you've got the money, I highly recommend you buy one. If not, I recommend adding this to your wish list because honestly, it is awesome. All right, moving on, the Smart Ref Digital Refractometer, also made by Anton Parr, works like a standard refractometer, but unlike standard refractometers, it actually provides accurate numbers without the need for temperature and wart and alcohol correction uh, because the Smart Ref has all these calculations built into it. It can also measure the specific gravity of unfermented wart and fermented wart because again, it has a correction factor built in for uh, wort um, or beer that contains alcohol. It is um, less expensive than the Easy Dens, although slightly less accurate. Uh, to use it, download the Brewmeister app, open the app, turn on the Smart Ref, and hit connect on your phone. Again, it connects automatically. Fill the cup to the line with wort and hit start. They say that the unit does need to be calibrated um, every now and again, but when I went to calibrate mine, I found that it was actually perfectly calibrated um, when I tried to do so. But if you need to do that, fill it with distilled water, hit the little three dots in the upper right hand corner on the app, and then choose the zero adjustment option. At $269, the Smart Ref is a bit cheaper than the Easy Dens. It's also very similar to the Easy Dens, but the Easy Dens is more accurate than the Smart Ref, according to Anton Parr. Um, Easy Dens also provides more measurement units than the Smart Ref. So neither are cheap, but uh, if this doesn't bother you, I'd recommend the Easy Dens. Also, if you're a homebrew baller and money is no object when it comes to your hobbies, you might as well get both because if you do, you will unlock a sweet feature that requires using the Easy Dens and Smart Ref simultaneously. 
Using these units at the same time allows you to calculate the ABV of finished beer to within half a percent with no need for original gravity readings. That means you can just brew the beer and not take any readings and when it's done, you'll still know the ABV. Um, which is perfect for a guy like me because I'm lazy like that. Here's a demo with uh, store-bought beer. After grabbing a sample, I'll degas it with a syringe like so. I like to do this four or five times. Then I fill both units and hit the measure ABV option. As you can see, it more or less nailed the ABV of this pumpkin beer. Again, it only provides readings to within a half percent um, and then it rounds from there, but I'll take it. Enter Clawhammer10 for a 10% discount on the Anton Parr website. Also, go to our website for a more detailed explanation of all of this. All of the links are below. Thanks for watching.